Here we are, sports fans. There's my beautiful wife, Carol. She's cooking dinner up in my kitchen. Uh, over here in our breakfast nook. You can see here in Ohio, it is snowbound. Patio is snowed in. And it's cold. So this is a little area I've got set up. I'm currently working on some fall shamagers. And I was going to show you a few little tips on what I'm working on here at the very end. Okay, got the camera set up. Um, here's a stand of the one of the fall shamager teams. And I've already got uh, several different colors going here. Um, for the pants, I'm using a, a German field gray. You can think of it like a um, a gray that's got a little green in with it. Uh, it's pretty actually a pretty cool color once it dries. Um, for the flesh, I've mixed two colors. We've got the tan yellow, right? It's a little kind of dark, and then I've got Vallejo Pale Sand. Probably about 50-50 of each. I use a 50% Pale Sand, 50% Tan Yellow. And then I mix it on my little plate I was showing you. I use a little, just a toothpick there to mix it. And then I can take a dropper and use a dropper full of water to thin it out so it's not so thick. Um, this is my test stand, but today I'm going to show you uh, working on the uh, ammo, you, or the, not the ammo, the camo. Fallschirmagers had the, uh, the German gray pants, and then they had flecks of camo. They were one of the first armies in World War II to utilize camouflage. So you can see some of the caps, I've painted the caps. Some of the helmets I've painted with the camo, All right? And this is a command team. I did the guns with a um, just some of my older Citadel paints that I'm using up the bolt gun metal. Um, I'll go back and I'll pick out some of the packs with the dark flesh and the scorched brown, which is um, uh, another color that I'm using on some of their equipment and packs. You see the little pouches and packs that they have. I am on so on these. I'm picking these out. Um, I've been using the Anthrax Earthshade as my wash. These have already been washed, so that's really brought a lot of the detail out. And then what else have I got here? A couple of the Vallejo colors I've used for the uh, base, which is Tan Earth that here, tan earth. So what I did was you can tell that I've just started with a, a tan as the base coat and I did that with spray paint then I went back with the Vallejo tan earth and I've touched up any of the areas that did not get hit by the uh, tan spray paint as the base coat and since their jackets are the tan base that really eliminated 50% of the painting right there. So with the wash, you can see the details it brought out. I went out and picked out the guns. I've done the... Um, some of the models have the older... Oh, what do they call them? Type, type 39 German helmets. I just went ahead and painted those in the German field gray. And then the regular Fallschirmager helmets on this guy and this guy. I'm going to do camo pattern on those suckers. So we'll take our German uniform and my white plate. And here's what we'll do. You can see here I was working on some of that about a few days ago. Shake it up. I'm using the painter detail to do this with. Like I told you before, that's one of my two brushes I use. And you can see the how fine the tip is. It's perfect. 
We'll take our German Uniform Gray and we'll put a dab onto the palette. It seems to be the perfect consistency. I don't really need to... Um, I'm not really going to put any water in it. It's, it's still the perfect consistency. So we'll take the toothpick, clean the tip of it off here with a paper towel. And then I'll put it off to the side here so I can dip into it. And I'll take our figure here, just a tiny dab onto the tip. You can see just a tiny dab of paint. And then I'm going to go through and start doing very small camo lines on his jacket. Little dabs and little lines on his jacket. Work that around. A little bit at a time. Turn the figure around. Do the other side. A little bit here, a little bit there. my way around the helmet and this is like you can think of it like a a nice uh, bright forest green type color is what they used I'll do this guy's jacket while I got it facing this way just little dabs little squiggly lines and what I did you can google Falschemager and it will show you the camo pattern so you can duplicate it as best you can. It's not going to be perfect. At 15 millimeter scale it's not really going to be you know perfect. You can see there, you can see the how cool that's going to look. Then you come back in with um, Oh, a dark, there's a dark brown that we'll use, and then we'll use this color, the leather brown. We'll use that for the other color in the camo scheme. So it's like a green and a brown with the tan. And that was basically the, the uh, color scheme they used for their camo. Little dabs, just don't put a lot on your brush. Just like this. Make sure I'm keeping it in the frame here. Gonna twist and turn the figure around, get to the little nooks and crannies. A lot of good detail. Oh, I did the boots in like a uh, a dark brown also. His Fallschirmagers were one of the first German troops that they actually started using more of a style of a combat boot that laced up the front instead of their their typical jack boot which had the it was the black leather it was a traditional German boot military boot. So taking a look around making sure I'm getting all of the open spots and you just do that you gotta go like a conveyor belt and you just go a little bit at a time and then I'll come in and I'll pick out the packs once I get finished with the dark brown squiggles on their camo pattern And that will be that, as it were. You see how this one's coming along? And you can see an entire company. This is an entire company of Falschermakers. My big recommendation is if you're going to get into Flames of War, you really don't need a lot of infantry. You don't use a ton of infantry, so and the infantry are the toughest to paint. So we always started, we started with playing with tanks, then we added on 
um, playing with artillery and tanks, anti-tank guns, those kinds of things. And then we added an infantry last. I've got a whole, I don't know, probably two companies of uh, Panzer Grenadiers. That's I tend to play Panzer Grenadier lists. And then I wanted these Fallschirmeggers for using for parachute operations. You can actually drop these guys in just like the U.S. Airborne uh, lists. You can drop these guys in. They can play Northern Italy campaigns for Italy campaigns. Um, they were also used a lot after D-Day. Uh, they were parachuted in as specialist forces to blow up bridges and to slow down the Allied advance. So just twisting and turning the models here, trying to keep in the frame here. Um, and that one looks pretty good. Make sure I don't miss any spots on the helmet. The helmets will really look cool when they're camoed. And you see the tip of the brush will start to get like a little crust on it. So you just make sure you keep it clean, clean it periodically. Just like that. Shake, 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 shake. Okay. Take your towel. Get your paint off the tip. Put the tip in. Make sure it's gotten into it back to a nice fine point. And you just keep going stand by stand, bit by bit, until you get everything done. That's a lot. Take a little bit of time. Once we're done with that, we'll be doing the brown squiggles. We'll do the packs, the little packs and little pouches and things that are on the troops. And then we will uh, start with the basing. We'll be using the sand. I'll paint up probably a... I haven't decided what color I'm going to do around the trim of the bases so we can designate these as Falschemagers. And then... Uh, We'll do the sand basing that I've, sh that I've uh, talked about. So I've got a nice seat here. Got a good view of the TV set into the family room. And that's it for today. I'll get back here in just a little bit when we do another color. Okay, going to do a different bit of a camera angle here, guys. Uh, just repositioned the camera and clipped it. I bought a special camera clip and just clipped it to my work light and I thought this might be a better angle to watch me do the detailing in so I can keep it in this shot here I'm just going to go around and do their helmets right now do a little dabs and stripes squiggles I think the trick here is you just don't um, Press too hard on the brush, and you can get all their little camo patterns going on here. As you go along, as that paint sits on the palette, and that's where you know a lot of guys like the wet palette. I personally wasn't a big fan of it. Um, I can just take a dropper, a drop of water, put on there, stir in the water with my toothpick, and. Uh, That'll keep my paint from getting too dry. I don't want it too dry. Yeah, this seems to be working pretty good, this camera angle. So, just experimenting today. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm sure there's guys out there that paint the Warhammer stuff, or the Flames of War stuff, and it's got to be you know, perfectly historically accurate with the colors. I think this is about as close as I could get with the real Falschemaker colors. And yeah. Let's see, I'm gonna back off just a little bit. There we go. Might be just a little too tight on that. And you see I'm dabbing dabbing the paint 
palette quite a frequently. I usually get enough paint on the brush to do probably one guy before I have to dab it again. I'm not putting very much on the tip, just a tiny bit. Let's get the brush into the shot here. Just a tiny, tiny bit. It goes along pretty quick if you just keep at it. You can knock them out relatively quickly. The tip I have for anybody that's getting into this hobby is don't overbuy your stuff. You know, just buy a little, buy one thing, like a box of tanks or a box of troops, whatever it is you're getting, and don't buy anything else until that's done. Because what happens is you end up having too much and you get overwhelmed, and then nothing gets finished. And you end up like I did, I had four or five things laying around that were half finished. And this stuff is too expensive to let it just sit around and not get done. That's basically it. You just kind of pick and work your way around like that. One stand at a time. I kind of do like a conveyor belt and I'll put my troops all lined up. Clean my brush out here. It's getting crusty again. Put a drop of water. That paint's starting to get a little crusty on the top. I can get that into the shot. So I take my drop. Just one. Yeah, let's go two drops. And stir it up. And that way the paint won't dry up on you.